Uh, spring has sprung, baby. Don't mind me, I'm just getting a spoon so I can eat some minestrone soup. It tastes good, good for you. Hello Tube, what's up? Today we're going over spring essentials, my spring fashion trends of 2022. And that may sound like a weird sentence, it's because I thought, it seems like the word trends is really big and people click on that on YouTube videos. So I was like, well, I could twist that. So today we'll be talking about, I don't know why I'm yelling. Today we'll be talking about things that I wanna wear for 2022 for spring. It's mostly jackets and boots. I assure you that I will also be wearing pants. And then we'll talk about my philosophy on clothing because I'm changing it this year a little bit, which I think will be good. First taste test. Oh, it's very good. Minestrone soup is not usually my favorite, but it's the only one that's vegetarian at ShopRite. So that's the one I get. Okay, so this is pretty much my everyday uniform. It is a pair of raw denim jeans. These are Levi 505 LVCs. These are Blundstones, a jacket of the sort, pretty low key, neutral, and then like a sweater or a t-shirt. I'll tell you about this sweater later, by the way. And I like this outfit a lot, but I am, I can't lie, getting sick of it. I miss, I just want like more color, less, these, all these colors are great and they're very muted but they feel a little bleh, too neutral for what I want. So my goal this year is usually, the reason this happens and why I like these clothes is because they get better with age or they wear down and they're really useful and practical or something like that. This year I'm promising myself I'm going to get clothes that I like even if they're not 100% practical. Like loafers, love loafers. So anyways, without further ado, here's the top of the top list. And like I said, this sweatshirt, some cool pants and stuff like that. So here we go. So the first thing is actually something I'm wearing today, and that is a spring sweater. Usually that means it's made out of cotton or linen. This one comes from Noah NYC, which thank you. I don't know which one of you suggested I check out Noah, but I did, and I bought a lot of stuff from there, including a white barber jacket that I'll talk about later, and I'll do a full review on, but either way, this is a spring sweater, and it's great. It's a very tight weave. I would say medium weight. Noah on the website basically says their goal was to make an everyday essential sweater that is just made really well and that's it. And that is literally exactly what it is. It's also fully fashioned, which I read about recently and I'll read exactly what they say it is because they do a better job than me. Not Noah, but Balm Studio. Fully fashioned is the more traditional type of knitting where each piece of clothing is made entirely from scratch. This means that the fabric is knitted into shape by knitting machine and then sewn together. Fully fashioned knitwear is often seen as being of a higher quality than cut and sew knitwear as it is made from a single piece of fabric. That seamless garment has a neater finish since it has no unsightly seams on the entire garment. Highly suggest you check them out. I think they're amazing. Anyways, time to go. Might as well just go the easy way. While we're on the subject of Noah, I also got something else. It was a limited edition run and it sold out really quick, so I don't think you can get it, but they made a barber bedale in white and it's different the wax on it is different the buttons on it are different and there's also a giant like popeye on the back which uh, is not that good um, i'll do a review on it soon just because it's so different i feel like it'll be fun to look at but i feel like that's cool both obviously a barber jacket that's a great piece of kit and then also a white jacket it could be kind of considered a chore coat or something like that either way that is going to be one of my spring essentials and it's not a sewn on patch so i can't take it off. I thought maybe I can get one of those a seam ripper and I would just use that to do it, but it's not how it works. It's actually really in the fabric. Next up is actually something from Taylor Stitch. I was looking for a boat shoe, but I didn't really want a classic boat shoe. So I was looking for a boat shoe with a lug sole. And Timberland did a collaboration with, I think, Sperry. And they took a lug sole from their Timberland boot and put it on Sperry. That looks phenomenal. My friend Marcus has that. And then Yucatan also has some. But then Taylor Stitch dropped this. And this is called the Ridge Mock in Golden Brown Waxed Suede. And that's, a, that's exactly what I was looking for. That is like the perfect this type of style shoe boot that I feel like you could wear anywhere. It's resolable. The leather on it looks beautiful. So they, I actually, I meant to buy it when it was in the workshop 
and then I forgot. Four ounce wax suede, so it's pretty heavy. That's pretty cool, it's pretty heavy. It's got a good heft to it. If you try to pick that up, it's pretty, pretty substantial. That's really cool. We're gonna do a little boot section now. I am going to a far off land tomorrow. So I'm bringing boots there and I will tell you about those right now. But I have to go back because, well, I'll tell you then. Okay, it's, this is the, what is what I'm talking about? Whoops, this is what I'm talking about. Nice and sunny, I love that. Real quick, before I go, I decided I'm gonna stay for one more thing because it's getting sunny. I'm going somewhere special, like I said, in tomorrow. So I got boots for the occasion, I got sweaters for the occasion, I got a new bag, I got a ton of stuff. I'll tell you all about that next week, but, oh, but the boots that I got are, I was gonna get Doc Martens and then I just couldn't, I couldn't get the OG Doc Martens because they're not that well made anymore. And then the Made in England ones, I was like, maybe I should get those. And then I, I didn't. I got Solvair, who was the original maker of Doc Martin boots. And I got their monkey boot. And that's actually why I went with Solvair, because the monkey boot is really, really cool. Also, if you don't like black boots, check out them in, I think it's called Acorn. That's incredibly beautiful. Now, I wrote this down for you. The history of the humble monkey boot dates back to World War II, worn as standard issue by the Czechoslovakian army. Their durability, practicality, and the fact that they were inexpensive made them the ideal boot for the foot soldier, not the ideal boot for the hand soldier, who would just wear gloves. All right, I think that's enough. Never mind, it's not enough. It's getting, oh God, ow. Jeez, what the heck was that? Not enough, it's getting prettier by the second. We can't leave, I'll call the guy, I'll get a new desk, it doesn't matter, desks are replaceable, the sun is not. But anyways, on days like today, where it's kinda cold, it's like 45 degrees outside, it's very like early spring feeling, you could still get away with a jacket. So this is a, uh, well, you've probably heard of this before, it's a varsity jacket. There's great ones made by Dehan 1920, Double RL actually usually makes some really amazing ones. I forget, I think it was Ame Leon Dor. I, I don't know how to say that brand, but they made like a chess club one. I'll put it up right here. But the one that I wanna showcase today is by the Brooklyn Circus, which is a really cool brand based in Brooklyn, which is now where I'm based, so that's a cool thing. But the specific one I was looking at is the Green Mile. There's no leather on it, which some people like the leather sleeve, some people don't like that it's not a complete leather jacket, but I think it's cool. I like this one a lot. I like the color. Definitely check out the Brooklyn Circus if you haven't already, just because the whole aesthetic is really cool. It's like modern ivy in a way. It's awesome. I love it. Okay, well speaking of spring, you know what they say about spring. April showers bring May flowers. Actually, I guess that's what they say about April. My friend Brendan and his sister Rose say that I remind them of the Morton Salt Girl. And I don't I really know as to why. They said just a very similar energy. So maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but this next thing is actually a raincoat. I have a Barber raincoat, I have another Barber raincoat, and then I have a Winslow wax parka. But I don't have like a real, yeah, I could just stand outside like this, like the Morton Salt Girl, and let it rain on me indefinitely without having to keep my jacket like upkept. So this is that. It's a Stutterheim rain jacket. It's beautiful. The original one, it's not practical at all. It's 18.7 ounces of rubberized cotton, which means cotton with a very thick layer of rubber on top of it. So rain will not get through, but also this is not breathable at all. So your sweat won't come out. It'll just get trapped in there. And if it's too warm, it'll be horrible. But if it's a day like today, you'll be totally fine. Well, goodbye, old desk. You have served me well, but not great. This is a, real quick, then we'll get back to clothes. This is a 1960s, this chair, ignore it. This is an old chair I found outside. This is a 1960s desk made out of teak. And the coolest thing about it is not the desk, but it's, I have two hard drives that I use when editing. And there's a secret shelf behind the desk so you can store things. Okay, but anyway, so we're actually getting kind of through the list. I don't know if this is a short video or not. There is a cool thing at the end that we'll talk about, but before we get to that cool thing, the other big thing is sneakers. And I really like the New Balance 550s, and so does everybody else. That's not a unique thing at all, but I just, I think they're gorgeous. They're really hard to get though, so I might get a pair of Nike Dunks low instead. What do we think? Good desk? Too small? I'll be honest, I have a habit of not measuring things, looking at the picture and being like, oh, I know exactly how big that is, and then not being correct. But I think this is a good size. I'm a little shocked, this dwarfs it, but I do like it a lot. And also, I just, the people that deliver the furniture were just the loveliest people 
on the face of the earth. They actually, they invited me to their wedding and not like a joke, like seriously, they sent me a save the date. See, Michael Christie, you're invited, save the date. And this is them, this must be their name. So I think I'm gonna go. We just stood here and we chatted and then I gave them my end table. Wasn't planning on doing that. I just felt like it was such a warm moment. I needed to give them something and they worked in furniture. So now I need to get a new end table stat. Okay, welcome back to my kitchen. This is, I promise it's not gonna become a cooking show. I figured there's one more thing that I wanna tell you that's techie, but before that, my basic plan for style this year is essentially cool socks, white socks probably. I think darn tough even, because they have a lifetime warranty, so those are great socks. And then jeans, a little bit flowier pants, like loose khakis, maybe even dress pants if I'm feeling crazy. And then t-shirts, graphic t-shirts. I looked at Just OK Company, which I mentioned before. Knickerbocker is a company that I just got into. And then finally, I think the move is with t-shirts or if I get a tank top or something like that, I want to go to a bunch of thrift stores and just get kind of oversized or properly fitting short sleeve like buttoned shirts in some way or another. I think that might be the move. So that is kind of... Okay, so this last thing is actually not a piece of clothing at all. It's a bag. It's Filson's Backpack Dry Bag, which is a very funny name, but it's a beautiful bag. And to me, it looks like something that should go on the moon. It's fascinating. It's completely waterproof. I, I, I don't know what the material is, but I can feel it in my head. Made out of an 840 denier nylon tarpaulin fabric coated with thermoplastic polyurethane. Translation is made out of a heavy plastic and then sealed on the sides with plastic and then coated with a plastic that is more plastic than the other plastic. The seams are radio frequency welded, a cement free process that permanently fuses the fabric layers together, assuring flexible integrity without fail. All webbing and padding is securely stitched to an additional layer of waterproof fabric which is then RF welded to the body's bag. So that's the grand finale of this video. I hope you liked it. Wow, that's a small desk. Dude, you could have gotten a bigger desk, I think. That looks pretty small. That's what Chris is gonna say when he comes in later. But anyways, that's about it. I will see you very soon. I'm s I am hope these videos haven't been too off the mark. I've been very busy lately, and I'm, you know, I start to get a little paranoid that some, I start to get a little worried sometimes that the videos aren't good anymore. So hopefully this is good. Um, it haunts me every day.